In this video, we are going to show you some of the rare photos of Diana Rigg while also sharing little known facts about her life story. Before her death, Diana Rigg was an advocate for peace and for life. But behind the scenes, her personal life is filled with turmoil, sadness, and tragedies to the point that she begged her daughter to end her life by putting a pillow over her head. What exactly happened to her? Let's find out while showing you some of her rare photos. In interviews, she's funny and polite, but in real life, she has been said to have had a wicked sarcastic wit about her. She also had a pretty bad temper with a sharp tongue and was quick to get angry. Things that got on her nerves were people who dropped their trash, people who had no manners, and people who jump cues. And then there was the road rage. Yes, she would yell at people in traffic. If Diana Rigg didn't like you, she would tell you. But maybe it was that kind of brute honesty that made her the larger than life icon that she was. As she said it herself, I speak my mind. If I see something is unfair, I'll do my best to address it. It's hard to say which is more interesting, her personal life or her professional career. Both are filled with drama, controversy, and scandal. But why is that? Well, to get a good sense of that, we'll have to start from the beginning. Diana Rigg was born on July 20th, 1938. Her parents were Louis and Beryl Hilda Rigg. She was the youngest of two siblings. Originally from Doncaster, England, her parents lived in India, where her father worked as a railway engineer. While pregnant with Diana, her mother briefly moved back to England only to give birth. Four years earlier, she had given birth to Diana's brother in a military hospital in India. It was a bad experience for her, and she felt it would be safer to give birth to her second child in England. Diana was only two months old when mother and daughter moved back to India to rejoin the family. Growing up, she learned Hindi as a second language. If she had a happy childhood in India, it was not to last. With World War II over, her parents shipped her back to England to a Protestant boarding school. She was only eight years old at the time and must have felt alone, terrified, and abandoned. She struggled to fit in, and in her own words, hated it. For most of her life, her experience there would make her feel like she didn't belong anywhere. I felt like a fish out of water, she later said. Although it was a really difficult time in her life, it helped to shape her character. She found a love for performing early on in life, but there was no one to encourage her or support her. In fact, in typical Diana Rigg humor, she later recalled, I might have well said I wanted to go on the game when I told the headmistress I wanted to be an actress. For those not familiar with British slang, to go on the game means to become a working girl and to sell your body on street corners. And if there's one thing you'll learn about Diana Rigg in this video, is that she's never done what she's told. So after finishing school in 1955, she ignored her headmistress and joined the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. There, she studied acting for two years before landing a professional role in the 1957 play, The Caucasian Chalk Circle. After that, she joined the Royal Shakespeare Company, where she soon made a name for herself as an outstanding actress. During this time, she also did some modeling and had a few small supporting roles in British TV series. During most of 1964 with the Royal Shakespeare Company, she toured through the USA, the Soviet Union, and Europe. But her major break came in 1965 when she landed one of her most iconic roles ever, a role that she would later come to hate. It was the role of Emma Peel in The Avengers. At the time, she had no idea what The Avengers was. She had never watched it before she auditioned for the role, and believe it or not, she never watched it even after she starred in it. I hadn't seen it. I didn't know what it was about. I had absolutely no idea at all, she once confessed. The Avengers was a spy comedy, and at its center were John Steed and Emma Peel. John Steed, played by Patrick McNee, was a sophisticated and dapper secret agent. His sidekick, Emma Peel, was a super sexy crime-fighting beauty. The character was far ahead of her time. Not only was Emma Peel a sex bomb who loved wearing leather cat suits, but she was also a feminist. She was smart, intelligent, and quick on her feet. Imagine Diana's surprise when she discovered that she was being paid mere pennies compared to her male co-actors, but it gets worse. Diana was the leading lady in a smash hit TV series, but even the cameraman got paid more than her. And when she stood up for herself and demanded a triple increase in her salary, well, she was on her own. Not a single woman in the industry defended her, and nor did her friend and co-star, Patrick McNee. The media made her out to be a money-hungry, mercenary young woman stepping out of line. Diana eventually got the increase, but it came at a great cost to her reputation. 
even though Diana did only two seasons on the show, it instantly catapulted her to international stardom. It's every actress's dream come true, right? Not for Diana. To her, the sudden fame was a horror show. In Germany, police once had to use their batons to fend off crazed fans. On another occasion, she had to hide in a public toilet to get away from her admirers. She became a sex symbol overnight. It made her feel uncomfortable, and she hated it. Bombarded with fan mail that she was too scared to read, she would keep it locked up in the back of her trunk. She didn't want to reply, but thought it was rude to just get rid of it. Eventually, her mother had to step in and respond on her behalf, especially to the letters that were a bit inappropriate or below the belt, replying things like, My daughter's far too old for you. Go take a cold shower. Or run around the block. Looking back at her iconic Emma Steele character later in life, she admitted that she was grateful for the role. In fact, she was grateful for every role she ever played, big or small, success or failure, but she never liked to think back on those days. She hated that she was remembered for her Avengers role, remembered for the catsuit wearing sex bomb, and not remembered for her more serious work. In her own words, it was a terrible chasm between the icon she was back then and the icon she was later in her career. And besides, she hated that leather catsuit. She described it as a nightmare. It was hot and sticky and took 45 minutes to get out of. The fame that came with the Avengers was overwhelming. It made her feel paranoid, and she often felt like packing her bags and running away. But what she did not know yet was that more fame was soon to come. In the mid-1960s, a scandal surrounded Diana's love life when she got into a serious relationship with a man eight years her senior. At the time, she was in her early 20s. But the age gap wasn't the troubling part. Her lover, Peter Saville, was a married man with two children. Even though he had separated from his wife, they were still not divorced. Diana and Saville were intimate for eight years, but with her being the ever-free spirit, she never wanted to marry him. As she described it, she was not the type of girl who cared about being a respectable woman. Simply put, she had no plans of getting married, ever. Two years after her phenomenal success as Emma Peel, she landed another major role, this time in the 1969 Bond film on Her Majesty's Secret Service. But once again, with more fame came more drama and also scandal of a sexual nature. Diana played the role of Tracy DiVincenzo, the only Bond girl ever to make an honest man out of James Bond by marrying him. In the leading role of 007 was George Lazenby, a man whom Diana seemed to have absolutely hated throughout the rest of her life. There was even a rumor that she would eat garlic before their love scenes, just to annoy him. Imagine having to keep a straight face for the camera while trying to passionately kiss a fresh garlic mouth. But it turned out the rumor was not true. So, who started it then? According to Diana, it was Lazenby himself. True to Diana's fiery temper, she did not let it slide and publicly called him out to set the record straight. One can only imagine how much it must have humiliated Lazenby, and maybe that was what Diana was aiming for. Another rumor swirled around that there was an intense sexual attraction between Diana and Lazenby, and that she was desperate to have an affair with him. As the story goes, she would only do it if he did not mess around with other girls. Sure enough, she apparently caught him screwing around with a girl in the stunt tent. And guess who spread that rumor? If you guessed that it was once again Lazenby himself, then you are right. Diana never responded to his claims, but it's hard to believe that any of it is true. In interviews, she has described him as outright ghastly, as a man full of himself who liked to throw his weight around. Despite the off-screen war between the two co-stars, many feel it was the best Bond movie of them all. Not so much for the action, but because the film explores James Bond's character and psyche on a deeper level. We discover the man more than the legend. In the early 70s, Diana found new love, this time with an Israeli painter, Menachem Gwefen. It wasn't a ravenous sexual attraction or even love at first. The pair connected on an intellectual level before eventually falling in love. But from the start, their relationship was wrought with fighting and bickering. On vacation in Israel with her new lover, the two got into a heated argument. In a rage, he threw all her luggage out the window of their hotel room. That was the end of their relationship, you would think. Diana had already made it clear years earlier that she would never get married, and she is not one to put up with a man's issues. But you won't believe what she did. After their massive fight and on a flight home, her response to the entire mess was to ask Geffen to marry her. 
Yes, she asked him. He said yes, and the rest is history, although a very short history. In an interview on the actual day of their wedding, Diana admitted that she had met her match and that the couple was still fighting a lot. I give the marriage a year, she said. And sure enough, 11 months later, Diana and Gwefin separated. More scandal followed in 1977, when Diana gave birth to her only daughter, Rachel. It was one of the happiest days of her life. Diana even gave up her career to raise Rachel and to give her all the love and attention that Diana did not get from her own parents. But once again, there was a problem. Diana wasn't married. Rachel's father, Archibald Sterling, was a well-known producer. The couple finally married five years after Rachel was born, but it was not to last. The couple got divorced in 1990 after Diana discovered that her husband had been cheating on her with another famous actress, Joelie Richardson, who had since become a famous and successful actress in her own right. Even more of a blow to Diana, however, was that at the time, Richardson was a young beauty of only 25, more than half Diana's age. Diana continued to make a name for herself in film, TV, and theater, and most notably landing a major role in the award-winning hit series, Game of Thrones. The role was offered to her, and just like with the Avengers, she had never heard of Game of Thrones before that. She had never watched it before auditioning for the role, and she had never watched it since, not even while appearing in the show. Diana played the wise and formidable Olena Tyrell, who quickly became a fan favorite for her wit and wickedness. Diana loved playing a bad character, she admitted. They are so much more interesting than good. There are some actors who don't like to play bad. They like to be liked. I love to be disliked. And it's true. Diana never cared much for fame, never cared if she was liked or not. She cared about her career, and she cared about doing the right thing and standing up for what you believe in. Diana passed away on September 10, 2020, after a long and painful battle with cancer. During her illness, she advocated for assisted dying. In her final days, she even begged her daughter, Rachel, to end it all, looking her in the eye and saying, Rachel, it's gone on too long. Push me over the edge. It was a promise that Rachel had made to her mother when she was still very young, that she would put a pillow over her head and end her life if she ever asked for it. Perhaps Diana had always known that her life would end in pain, but when push came to shove, Rachel could not do it. During her life, Diana spoke up about the war in Vietnam. She spoke up about the war and violence in Northern Ireland, and she marched for peace in Iran. In her final months, she spoke up about the right to end your own life on your own terms and not to suffer through a painful and dehumanizing end. To her very last breath, Diana Rigg was fighting for a cause. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.